Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris Wyatt Reports. The Harvard Crimson reports that Harvard President Claudine Gay resigned Tuesday, January 2nd in the afternoon after fierce criticism of the university's response to the Hamas attack on Israel and backlash from her disastrous congressional testimony spiraled into allegations of plagiarism and doubts about her personal academic integrity. Now, it's more like her bumbling, incoherent denials about a tide of anti-Semitism on campus exposed her for the less than brilliant or erudite or articulate academic, which Harvard claimed that she is. Now, actually, the New York Post reported her plagiarism to Harvard back in October, long before she appeared in front of Congress. Rather than take the newspaper seriously, according to the Post, Harvard threatened legal action against the paper to protect their DEI hire. While it was well past time for accountability from Harvard, Dr. Claudine Gay will remain as a Harvard faculty member and will likely retain her outrageous $900,000 a year salary. Prior to being named the Harvard president, Dr. Gay earned $879,079 as a faculty of arts and sciences dean in 2021. And in 2020, she earned $824,068. Now, these figures come from the Ivy League school's newspaper, The Harvard Crimson. Gay's tenure as president of Harvard of just six months and two days is the shortest in Harvard's nearly 387-year illustrious history. In announcing her retirement, Dr. Gay had the following to say, I believe in the people of Harvard because I see in you the possibility and the promise of a better future. These last weeks have helped make clear the work we need to do to build that future, to combat bias and hate in all its forms to create a learning environment in which you respect each other's dignity and treat one another with compassion, and to affirm our enduring commitment to open inquiry and free expression in the pursuit of truth. Sadly, Harvard didn't want open inquiry, nor did she in her academic record. She continued saying, I believe we have within all of us that we need to heal from this period of tension and division and to emerge stronger. Tension and division. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. She continues, I'd hope with all my heart to lead us on that journey in partnership with all of you. And as I now return to the faculty and to the scholarship and teaching that are the lifeblood of what we do, I pledge to continue working alongside you to build the community we all deserve. The lifeblood? <laughs> what do you publish in there, Dr. Gay? She believes that. And that's a direct quote. So that's not plagiarism. I've quoted her and told you the source, Harvard Crimson. This is what I believe. I believe a university that grants a PhD to a serial plagiarist with nary any scrutiny of her academic chops just to satisfy their twisted diversity, equity, and inclusive objectives is not an institution of higher learning, but rather more akin to a grifting tax-exempt leftist indoctrination machine. That's what I believe, Dr. Gay. Claudine Gay has virtually no academic publishing record, just 11 papers, no books. I've been published in two books and have multiple papers published, and I don't even have a PhD. And there are already nearly 50 plagiarism claims that have cropped up or sprouted since she refused to condemn rising anti-Semitism on campus. Now, her pathetic performance in front of Congress was inevitable. Dr. Gay is clearly not up to scratch. But her resignation is far from sufficient. Harvard needs to review how she was awarded a PhD in the first place. She got it from Harvard. Additionally, members of the corporation's board of directors need to be held accountable for this debacle. That includes former American Express CEO Ken Cheneau, who ought to know better than to hire substandard talent. Yes, Ken Cheneau is black. And so what? Unlike Claudine Gay, Ken Cheneau is a success. Now contrast how the leftist who permits rabid anti-Semitism on Harvard's campus and then refuses to acknowledge her failures in front of the entire nation while also simultaneously facing nearly 50 plagiarism allegations, gets to keep her job. Yet the New York Times and leftists go rabid to dig up plagiarism by military officers. Two completely different standards. Two completely different standards here, folks. Now, I'm not defending plagiarism by military officers. I'm just showing the hypocrisy of how they go after military officers because they hate the military, but they allow leftists to retain their job and say, well, she didn't intend to steal other people's work. Lieutenant General Andre Pegui retired as a major general, not a lieutenant general, in 2019 after a U.S. Army War College Academic Review Board determined that he had committed plagiarism while he was a student there. He attended the War College in 2001-2002. He received his master's in military strategy in 2002. 
Now, he's not the first high-profile official to have his degree revoked by the Army War College over plagiarism. As I've told my audience many times, I'm a graduate of the school. I also taught there. And you can go out and see the bronze plaques that date from the beginning of the, the 20th century, every graduating class. And occasionally, you'll see a spot where a name has been chiseled off, where someone has committed a crime, or they've been accused of plagiarism and found guilty. Back in 2014, the United States Senator John Walsh, who'd been appointed to that position, a Democrat from Montana, had his master's degree revoked after the school determined that he had plagiarized the research paper. Um, the War College investigated after the New York Times reported that Walsh, a former adjutant general from the Montana National Guard, had lifted at least a quarter of his thesis from the work of others, uncredited authors. In fact, that's true. That's exactly what happened. And the same thing with Lieutenant General, who's now retired Major General Piggy. Now, the latest allegations against uh, Claudine Gay include her purportedly verbatim plagiarizing nearly half a page, yet she gets to keep a $900,000 a year job. Even Joe Biden dropped out of the 1988 presidential race when he was exposed as a plagiarist. But it doesn't stop here, folks. The poor Claudine bandwagon has begun. Yep. Congress's own race-hustling firefighter, Sparky Jamal Bowman, was quick to tell us Claudine Gay was bullied. And it's all about racism and intimidation because, well, she's a black woman. Apparently, all this has nothing to do with the nearly 50 plagiarism allegations, a virtually non-existent publishing record in an industry where the phrase publisher perish is e perishes even common knowledge outside the university system or tolerating anti-Semitism or her inability to answer simple questions from Congress. Now it's all about her genitalia and skin pigmentation. Representative Sparky Bowman, of New York is a disgrace and insults all Americans with his crass race hustling. Now, Sparky tells us in a Twitter post that 2024 will be a battle for truth, democracy, and our shared humanity. Indeed, it will be, but not from you, Sparky. Don't you need to find a fire alarm right about now? There you have it, folks. Claudine Gay has resigned as president of Harvard, and it's long overdue. She never should have been hired. It's nothing to do with her genitalia or skin pigmentation. It has everything to do with her lack of qualifications. And there you have it. But she'll be fine. $900,000 a year job. And she has no publishing record to speak of. And what she has published is rapidly being ripped apart with plagiarism allegations. Well, Harvard, you guys are just an indoctrination leftist bandwagon. Cheers, folks. Catch you later.